So, what are we doing today? Today, we're gonna take the bumper and everything off the front of this and install a super winch, 10K. I decided to go with the 10K winch for two reasons. One, this vehicle's curb weight is 5,200 pounds. A uh, typical winch should be about one and a half times the weight of your vehicle. And you can't buy a 12K right now. They're just not out there. So it works out by the, by the math and by the other parts. We'll talk about that in a minute. Right now, we got to get the bumper face removed so we can see how much room we have. Okay, so here is your Humvee frame rail, and let's get a light up here. <laughs> First of all, this is from uh, some Mudden Adventures. I have to vacuum that out so it didn't fall in my eyes the whole time. Uh, and these are your main rails in the front. So this this area here gives me something to bolt onto, to be conscious, obviously, of that the whole entire time as well. All right, this is just kind of funny. Um, I didn't do videos back when I first got this truck much, and um, so what I don't have is a video for you how I had to clean it up when I first brought it home. And let me tell you something, you see this just impacted mud? That was everywhere. Well, um, I think that we can safely say that I just removed about 17 pounds of crud that we won't have to winch anytime we winch this in the future. So, move on. Here's the problem. As you can see, nothing really wants to fit here. Um, a simple way of mounting it would be to extend the bracket and box this in, use the existing holes in the truck and just bolt it in. But of course, that puts us in conflict with the hood. This I'm gonna cut and change, pretend this isn't here. But this set up here, not ideal. Preferably, preferably if we were recessed a few more inches up under the front end, that would be good. The bad part is they have to cut up the bumper. And I kind of really hate to do that because I don't have a spare one. And I don't know that this is going to work. And I don't know that I'm going to keep this on the truck. So this is a bit of a dilemma. Um, I suppose there's a potential here to remove the bumper altogether and to build a, you know, a different one possibly out of that plate that I showed you that we have. So um, I got to look into this. All right, so, you know, this is not gonna be perfect by any means. It just isn't. Um, but we're gonna make it functional. So, hood is up right now at its maximum tilt. And my bracket is falling right underneath the mounting bracket where the uh, hooks go on right now. I really can't attach much back here because there's a strap that goes to the front suspension. It's right in the way of pushing this thing back any further. And I don't want to mess with that because that actually holds the front cross member in place as far as any torsional push on it. So what I'm going to do is go over here and cut some uh, 8 inch by 8 inch plate. And I'm going to build a box out, I believe, coming off here. So we'll just see what happens next. All right, I'm gonna try this uh, Milwaukee Sawzall made in USA, thick metal blade. Uh, this thing was actually super pricey. Uh, it was basically as much for this one blade as these, this pack of five. Pack of five says it has five times the life. And this crazy looking blade says it has 50 times the life. So we will see, we'll see what that is.
you know, I'm gonna get some oil. I don't think that can hurt. I about you guys, but this stuff smells something terrible. You get it, you get it on your clothes or whatever. Took the paint off the blade so far. Let's see what else we can do. Well, 50 times stronger. Tells me a regular blade would have stopped at the edge of that. Alright, well, that blade's about had it. So, 50 times stronger than what? I don't know. There you go, pretty good straight line. Let's go take a look. So, ideally, ideally, this plate will come in, drilled, and then I'll weld a supporting plate here to create a, you know, a L type thing in it. And I can come back and maybe trim or do some things to make it look a little bit more attractive, I guess. Um, this is the idea for now. Okay. Is that super pretty? Nope. But, let's see if we got anywhere close. Yeah, that's good. So, now, that thing is going to sit down inside. And uh, I'm going to start doing some other checking and assembly. I need to actually bolt the winch to the plate so I know exactly where it centers. And um, figure out where I'm going to put these uprights, if I'm going to kind of cock them at an angle or, you know, dead on straight. And um, I've got to drill the hole still in these, but I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and weld them in place before I drill them. That way nothing moves, you know, between drilling them and then trying to weld them on and that kind of thing. All right, so I've spared you a bunch of grinding and noise. And uh, here's what I've got. I've got my plates prepped. Um, I've measured out where I want these to be. I've tried to create, you know, a similar, and th this is actually for really safety purposes too, but a similar angle to the way that the brush guard bracket is. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tack weld these in place, and uh, that will begin the next process, and then I'll be able to exactly mark my holes to drill. We have test fit number one, hood up. Just a razor bit of clearance. My terrible flux core welds, but enough to get it in place to figure out what we're doing. I just set that back in there for height purposes, but uh, looks like we're in. Um, now I'm gonna go around on the back side and mark the mounting holes and uh, that way I can drill them and we can actually bolt it and let it hold there without the jack. Get everything test mounted and it occurs to me that I really need more support. So what I'm going to do, come back here on the back side and remove this upper bolt. Actually, I just backed it out. And what I'll be doing is putting a, a bracket off of here that'll drill and bolt through there, and that'll give uh, six points total to hold this thing on. Work on that next. The other thing I think is crucial is I think there should be a gusset in here. So I'll just cut a triangle off of the uh, stock that I have. This is the third bolt mounting on each side. Here's my plate. Tried to keep it as thick as I could, so I notched it around this plate. Quick tack weld on the back. Like I said, this is just flux core weld. Not pretty. So we have three points here. Three points here. Now I'm going to build the gusseting for this. All right, so it is roughed in all the way. The winch is sitting in with a couple of bolts. I've tested the fair lead and everything is going to fit and as an added bonus watch this 
I am going to be rebuilding this thing, but watch. Woohoo! No rub. I don't know how, but I mean, look at that. Can't complain. Well, it figures. Old trusty here. My, uh, my Lincoln Weld Pack 3200. I bought this probably in 2000, maybe 2001. And you can run it on gas, you know, or shielded. And typically I run it on shielded because I run out of gas so quick. It quit. So uh, here we are in the middle of doing this thing. And I just picked up its newest version. Uh, this is a 140 Pro MIG. Uh, maybe it's going to have a little more kick. It's got a little bit different sound to it. Uh, honestly, my welding stinks. Um, it was the old theory. If you put enough of it on there, eventually it's going to hold. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to finish that up with this. Get some paint on it tonight and get this thing mounted up so I can start wiring it. All right. So... Quick update, please don't look too close at my welds. I'm embarrassed of them, but they're on. That uh, 140 weld over there really does crank out much nicer than the other welder. So, um, there it is. I am going to go ahead and dust some paint on it and um, once we get that all set, I'll let it dry overnight, and tomorrow I'll go ahead and put it on and get the wiring. Here's our wrap up on the Super Winch install for the Humvee. My bracket with my awful welding completely installed. It's held in at six points, uh, bolted through here, and I also made a tab to bolt through. Uh, on the back into the side frame rail here. Believe it or not, it will clear the stock brush guard. As far as wiring it, I decided to go a little bit different for two reasons. One, my cables weren't long enough to reach the battery. And uh, two, uh, I wanna have the ability to shut this thing down if need be without having to disconnect a battery from a mechanical source. So what I did is I've got a heavy duty uh, 400 amp, um, 12 volt, 12, 24 volt, 48 volt uh, shut, shut off valve um, switch right here. And I brought up a one aught gauge wiring. You'll kind of see it through here. Up from the battery box on my 12 volt side of my battery up to this thing. And from here what I did is I switched the power and you can turn the winch on and off right here switches the power and gets the wiring out to the stock connector that came with the winch as far as the 12 volt lead. So why did I choose this particular winch? Well, one, it was available. Uh, two, when I was doing some research, at least initially it appeared that it was a USA made uh, product but I'm uh, more and more convinced that it, it's designed in the USA and made elsewhere. There are no uh, stampings on it anywhere that say where it's made. Um, so that is a fact about that. As far as features though, uh, Superwinch claims, they're now owned by a company called Weston, um, and Superwinch now claims that they this thing has a wider gear set than what you would normally find on other winches. Uh, provides a bit more heavy-duty uh, operation. Uh, plus, it came with features like the uh, built-in remote. Now, this box right here is the control box, and it's actually removable. It's held on by four screws, and then you could actually take it and put it somewhere else, depending on your installation. I considered removing it, raising this up higher, uh, and then doing some other things, but let me tell you, the screws that it's held in by are these Allen head screws. Um, I have metric and standard Allen head uh, tools. I haven't bought new ones just to make sure I didn't have some, you know, goofy wear, uh, you know, from using where it wouldn't get in. I was able to get this back one out, but these 
you can't get them out. And really, I didn't want to drill them. Uh, at the end of the day, it's perfect right here. I don't have a complaint, but I do want to tell you that I'm very disappointed with the quality of these screws right here, and that's just a fact. As far as features, though, that are pretty nifty, um, when you flip open the cover and install the remote control, it has, uh, this is, you know, nothing super amazing, but it does have a flashlight built into the end of this. So, you know, you're out there, you're trying to do your thing, and I've got light, right, right there. And then another cool feature, when we click this on, you can see we're now illuminated under the, we're actually illuminated right here under the winch control box. They claim this is a patented feature. And I think that's pretty handy because this is an area that you really want to be aware of what's happening as far as, you know, your, your, um, your rope feeding back in. It also had the option, which a lot of winches do, of having the um, synthetic or cable. I think that everything's going to the synthetic. I've personally been chewed alive by uh, cable winches before and, you know, had them dig into my hand and cut me up. So that is uh, a nice thing to not have to worry about. So that feature's great. The remote, in order to operate it, you're gonna hold down the in and out for about three seconds. And then you'll see now it's activated. And um, you know, you're just gonna, you're gonna press the button and away it goes. And uh, that's how the winch works on the remote. This will deactivate in two minutes if you don't use it. Um, so we'll just go ahead and turn it off for now. You hold both buttons back down and it shuts off. So those are really the features. You've got the engage, disengage over here. Uh, it pops up nice and easy. It's uh, This is metal. It looks plastic when you first look at it, but it's actually a nice anodized metal component. And that allows us to you know, get the winch out, lock back in. There she goes. And um, there it is, locked in. It seems to be a pretty heavy duty unit. Um, it does weigh quite a bit. I think it's, I don't know, like, what is it, like 80 pounds or something. It's pretty heavy. And um, it came with, on the power cable, it was probably, I'm going to say, six foot of power and ground cable. Uh, it was pre-terminated and it, all I had to do was add the ground. The power cable was already attached to the back. All that goes into this box back here. Um, it comes with the fair lead and then the rest of it's up to the installer. So, you know, for you Jeep guys out there, you really have it handed to you on a silver platter because you can buy every type of Jeep bumper, anything that you want. But, or if you just have regular mainstream uh, product, but if you have a custom rig or something like this, unless you buy the military version or unless you spend ridiculous amounts of cash on uh, all the other custom bumper kits, you're going to have to build something to make this go uh, on a Humvee or an H1. So um, again, at the end of the day, pretty happy with it. We do retain our original latches and it makes for a nice setup. It's fairly compact. Uh, the newer Humvees that have the bump out nose on them, you know, they're going to come out about yay far. So really, I'm not sticking out any further than some of the designs of this uh, could be. Um, once I added the grill guard to it, the bush guard, I lost that front tire um, area where you could, you know, climb walls, which you can't do it with a 37 inch anyway. You have to go to a bigger tire to get out in front of the fender. So, um, but anyhow, it doesn't hang down any lower than the front cross member, and it is uh, rigidly mounted. So um, that is the super winch.